I've been a vegetarian for the best part of 18 years. Since I was about 14, I started to phase out meat. And there are a number of reasons for this that I'm not really going to go into, actually. When people ask you why you're vegetarian or vegan, and if you are vegetarian or vegan, the real challenge is not finding a reason, it is selecting a reason from the many hundreds of, fr frankly, I think quite good reasons for being vegan or vegetarian. But uh, we're not going to go into that. We're not going to go into the different reasons. What we're going to look at is actually the crux of the issue. This is one of the great things about philosophy is when you explore things very deeply, sometimes you get down to the one issue that the whole thing rests on. And I think the crux of the animal ethics issue rests on whether there are morally relevant characteristics that distinguish or allow us to distinguish between animals and human beings. When you speak to meat eaters, they often uh, present arguments about why it's okay. And let's take an example of, for example, the person saying, well, I, I only eat a little bit of meat and I only eat meat that's organic and I make sure that I offset the carbon footprint by uh, sponsoring tree planting and this is a very conscientious meat eater we've got here. Suspiciously so. Hey. But this is the thing. Whatever the argument that's provided, the person who believes in animal ethics can then simply say, okay, well, in that case, it's perfectly fine for me to eat a human being, to breed a human being organically and treat them really kindly. I, I only buy my human flesh from uh, the organic butcher. It's locally sourced, incidentally, so it's okay. And uh, the carbon that's produced in the industrialized cannibalism process, I make sure that I offset by planting trees. And always the kind of hollowness of the meat eater's argument is basically revealed at this point. And so the meat eater, if they are to defend their position, has to say why an animal is different to a human being. What is the morally relevant characteristic that allows us to kill and eat an animal, to breed animals, to be killed and eaten, that doesn't allow us to breed human beings to be killed and eaten. And there are a number of plausible suggestions that meat eaters may commonly go to, but there's a bit of a problem with it. And uh, that is that usually a human being can exist who does not have that characteristic. And again, we're still not allowed to raise them, to kill them and eat them. That is intuitively seen as wrong. And so how do we justify this? So, for example, it is very common for someone to say, yeah, but animals aren't intelligent. You know, they're not as intelligent as we are. We're really intelligent and animals are a bit intelligent, but they're not very intelligent, not like us. And so it's OK for us to breed them and kill them and eat them. So this is a morally relevant characteristic, supposedly, that justifies why we're allowed to eat animals, but not allowed to eat humans. But then the vegan or vegetarian or animal ethics defender, animal rights defender, will say, well, hang on a minute, though, because there are human beings who are really unintelligent, who are less intelligent, actually, than pigs and dogs. You know, perhaps someone is born with some terrible mental defect, some neurological defect, and they're really unintelligent. They have an IQ of like 20 or something, or an IQ of 10 or whatever. It, whatever. I don't know what a pig's IQ is, but it's less than a pig's IQ. Pigs apparently being one of the smarter of the animals that we farm for food. So are we allowed to eat human beings that are really stupid. And if so, is it then possible uh, for us to start breeding really stupid human beings, treating them, uh, putting them through terrible conditions, and then, you know, slitting their throats or bolting them in the head and, you know, painlessly, of course, uh, killing and eating these human beings. And of course, uh, the meat eater is in a bit of a 
bit of hot water, I think, at that point, because the morally relevant characteristic all of a sudden loses its relevance. It's, it's actually revealed to be based on what moral philosophers have been co- have labelled speciesism, a kind of irrational, unjustifiable prejudice against other living beings, against other species, based only on their species and, uh, and nothing else. There's no other morally relevant characteristic going on there. So, you know, regardless of the uh, of whether you're convinced by veganism and vegetarianism, regardless of whether you eat eat meat or not, I, I've really given up trying to persuade people, to be fair. But in terms of the actual logic of the arguments, if we're going to be fair in analysing how these arguments work and what the crux of the issue is, that is it. You know, whether there is some rational, logical justification for distinguishing between animals and human beings and what exactly that justification is. And I would argue that no matter what justification, no matter what morally relevant characteristic is put forward, one who wants to defend animal rights will be able to say, yeah, so it's okay to kill and eat human beings who lack that morally relevant characteristic. And there will always be uh, be some who do, really, unless you're going to just make it about the actual species. So that's the, that's the issue. You know, maybe you're going to use this to further your meat-eating arguments, but whatever, as long as you're logical and reasonable about it and, and it's really critical thinking that's going on instead of just defending something that deep down you know to be awful, uh, more power to you, I suppose. Uh, anyway, thank you for listening to my ramblings and I hope you have a nice day.